Can you imagine being in a hospital seeking refuge and suddenly finding it under attack? This chilling scene unfolded recently at Alamal Hospital in South Gaza. This haven, once filled with the soft hum of healing and hope, was abruptly transformed into a theater of terror when Israeli forces stormed its corridors. The hospital, a sanctuary for displaced individuals, was suddenly under siege. Israeli tanks, like Iron Guardians of Dread, took position in the hospital's front yard, their barrels belching live ammunition and smoke grenades. The air, once sterilized and still, was now thick with the acrid stench of smoke and the metallic tang of fear. The hospital, a place of refuge, became a battleground as the forces demanded the terrified inhabitants evacuate at gunpoint. The echoes of their commands, sharp and cold, cut through the cacophony of chaos, adding to the mounting fear. In a place where life is fought for, and often won, the safety of the wounded, the sick, and thousands of displaced people in the building hangs in the balance. What would you do if the walls of your refuge were destroyed and fires were set around you? Imagine the horrifying scene at Alamal Hospital, where the back wall was obliterated by Israeli forces. The hospital, a place of healing and safety, was suddenly transformed into a scene of utter chaos and destruction. In the midst of this terrifying ordeal, fires were lit in makeshift tents within the hospital complex. These tents, once a place of temporary shelter and respite for the displaced, were now engulfed in flames, adding to the pandemonium. The fear and terror experienced by the evacuees were palpable, as Israeli forces demanded they flee the complex, their guns serving as a chilling reminder of the consequences. Imagine the dread of not knowing where to run or where to find safety. Imagine the horror of leaving behind the only refuge you've known, not knowing if you'll ever be able to return. Imagine the terror of suddenly finding yourself in the middle of a war zone with no place to hide. This act has left the medical complex in shambles and its occupants in fear. Can you envision a city with only two operating hospitals? This is the stark reality for Khan Yunus, a city in the Gaza Strip. The recent attack on Alamal Hospital has exacerbated the already strained healthcare system. With this hospital now compromised, the pressure on the remaining medical facilities and their teams is immense. The medical teams are working tirelessly, under constant threat, to provide care for the wounded, the sick and thousands of displaced individuals. Amid the sound of gunfire and smoke grenades, they strive to maintain a semblance of normalcy, a beacon of hope in such trying times. The healthcare system in Gaza, according to the head of the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, is on the brink of collapse. The lack of oxygen supplies has led to the suspension of surgeries. Ambulances, marked with the Red Cross or Red Crescent emblem, have also been targeted, often near hospitals. This is the daunting reality faced by the medical teams in Khan Yunis. Yet, despite these severe conditions, they continue to operate, providing essential care to those in need. Their unwavering commitment in the face of adversity is a testament to their resilience and dedication to their profession. The ability of medical teams to keep operating amid such conditions is a testament to their resilience. What does it take for humanity to condemn heinous crimes? This question echoes in the hearts of Palestinians as they mourn the assassination of three young men by Israeli undercover forces in a West Bank hospital. Disguised as medical staff and women, these forces stormed the Ibn Sina hospital in the city of Jenin, assassinating the young men while they slept. A crime so cruel, so inhumane, it shakes the very foundation of our collective conscience. In response, the Palestinian Health Ministry has issued a plea, a desperate call for help, a cry for intervention, they are calling on the United Nations to intervene and put a stop to Israel's daily string of crimes against Palestinian people and health centers. They describe these actions as heinous crimes against humanity. Yet despite the gravity of these actions, the international community stands largely silent. The world watches, seemingly helpless or indifferent, as these crimes against humanity continue. The question remains, when will we as a global community say enough is enough? When will we take action to end this cycle of violence? The world watches as these crimes against humanity continue. Are we to remain silent while such atrocities occur? It's a question that echoes in the halls of humanity, a call to action for those who believe in justice and the sanctity of life. We are not merely spectators in a world theater. We are global citizens with the power to catalyze change. 
In an age where information travels at the speed of light, silence is not an option. We have the tools to amplify the voices of the unheard, to spotlight the atrocities taking place in the Gaza Strip. Social media, blogs, podcasts and videos are platforms we can use to share the story of Al-Amal Hospital, to resonate with the plight of the Palestinian people. We can demand international intervention, call on world leaders to step in and halt these egregious acts against humanity. We can petition our governments, support organizations working on the ground and spread awareness in our communities. But remember, this isn't just about speaking up, it's about listening too. Listen to the stories, the pleas for help, the narratives that mainstream media may overlook. Let these stories move you, fuel your desire for justice and drive you to act. Your voice can make a difference. Speak up, spread the word, demand justice for Gaza.